All right, guys, Spithead 1000 here. And um, originally, when we did our first video game review, which wound up being Yaw's Revenge, originally it was supposed to be Circus Atari. That was the first game I pulled off the shelf. Now, uh, Circus Atari is one of the, the few Atari 2600 games that uses the paddle controllers. So when I plugged in the, the, the game and the paddle controller, I got a little something like this. And what, what you're seeing there is a, a extreme jitter from, from our paddle controller. It, it's almost like our trapeze artist uh, you know, did an eight ball before he came to work. And now uh, we all know what happens when you mix drugs with the circus. That was actually one of, one of my better games of, of Circus Atari. But... Um, yeah, this is this this paddle is real jittery. What it needs is is a good cleaning. A lot of people think that the paddle is broken. It's not. What it needs is to be dismantled and it needs to be cleaned. So we're gonna do that right now, and uh, we're gonna take you. We're gonna go over to the table and, and take this sucker apart, and we're gonna fix it for nothing, guys, because that's how we do things around here. We do things cheap. So uh, join me over by the table, and we'll see if we can get this thing working right. Okay. So basically, what we're gonna need here is. Um a Phillips head screwdriver, a flat head screwdriver. This flat head is too big. If you have a small flat, the smaller the flat head screwdriver you have, the better. Uh, I have this pick here. That's going to assist me because I don't have a, a very small screwdriver. A toothbrush, not your toothbrush, of course, uh, an old toothbrush, a pair of pliers. Some cotton swabs, acetone, you can use a uh, nail polish remover too, roll of paper towels, and I use the, uh, the lid from a spray paint can to pour the acetone in, and our defective paddle controller. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, roll up our sleeves. And now on the paddle controller, all you have to do is, is grab the front knob. This is where you're going to start. You grab the front knob and just wiggle and pull it. Wiggle and pull it. And your knob should come off. Now there's a metal clip. As you can see, this metal clip stayed on, on, the, uh, on the shaft of the controller here. Normally it'll stay inside the knob, but it doesn't matter. Either way, it'll go back together, no problem. And then what you want to do is remove these screws with a Phillips head screwdriver on the back here. You open up the back cover and you notice, you know, as soon as I open the damn thing up, I mean, this thing is full of crud. So just, just imagine what's going on inside of the, that potentiometer there. So then we'll pop out our switch here. Take out this red switch here and remove the, this, this micro switch. This is basically your, your, uh, your fire button. And you'll notice you have your, uh, your rheostat or your potentiometer or your pot here. And all you have to do is, um, to remove that, is remove this nut right here. And you're going to use your pliers. And this, this isn't going to be tight. This nut spins right off. And then your potentiometer comes right out. And now your, uh, your control is pretty much apart. But this is the this is the uh, this is the piece of equipment that's giving us problems right here. This potentiometer. This gets all sorts of dirt and crud in it, and it, that's what causes the jitter on your paddle controller. So in order to take this apart, you see these tabs right here. I don't know how well my camera is focusing. You have to pry these tabs open, and that's where your small flathead screwdriver comes in. I have this big one. I don't think it's actually. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm able to wiggle it free. 
working like a real caveman here with these tools. You know, I'm going to use my pick on this one. It's hard to get at. You could use a, a sharp pick to initially pry it up, and then use your bigger screwdriver to get it the rest of the way. Okay, so now that your tabs are up, you could pull this, this threaded metal sleeve off. Actually, you got to remove that metal clip that was on the end of the plastic here. And you pull this threaded metal sleeve, this retainer plate, off. And then you can pull off the board here, plastic board. And you'll notice, I'll, I'll set this down, this part down for a second. And you'll notice this board has this um, metal contact surface around here. It's black, and it normally is black. It's not just dirty. There's metal contact surface around here. And then this, these two, this metal prong right here. And these, these are the contacts that you want to clean here. So we'll... Get our acetone open. I have some in the cup here, but I need a little more. All right. Now, a lot of guys they bitch and moan. You can't use a Q-tip because oh, it's going to leave fibers and, and 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 stuff on on the contact surfaces. But guys, this is an Atari joystick. We're not really building a, a supercomputer here. So just take a, take your your cotton swab, soak it in acetone, and just run it right around these, these contact surfaces here. I'm not afraid to be liberal with the acetone because it's just going to wind up uh, evaporating anyhow. Then take your clean, your dry end of the cotton swab and just, just clean around here. And you can see there's, there's, there's some schmutz on there, there's some dirt. Clean all around here. That's pretty much clean. That's as clean as it's going to get. So that's good. We could set this aside now and focus on this plastic piece right here. Now this plastic piece slides out of this metal bezel here and as you can see I'm, I'm always impressed by this there's still grease there's still grease in the bottom of this bezel that's got to be grease from what the early 80s late 70s so on this, on this plastic piece there's very delicate uh, metal contacts you want to be very careful with this and, and when we get up to this part what I like to do is I like to soak Soak the contacts down with acetone. I really use this acetone. I'm a real cowboy when it comes to this acetone, guys. Okay, and then I like to take the toothbrush, since these are, these are kind of delicate, these parts, and just brush the contacts with this toothbrush. And now I can see these things getting cleaner already. I don't know if you guys can, if you guys can see. These contacts are getting cleaner already. So that's all you have to do. You clean it up a little bit there. Take another clean swab. Just to dry it off a bit. Get any re residual dirt off of there. And that's, uh, look at this, okay, and that's pretty much clean. It's pretty much as clean as you're going to get it. So now all you have to do is uh, reassemble this joker. So if you remember this plastic piece goes in the bezel, like so, 
and you'll feel the stop in there, so you'll know you'll know exactly how to put it in. It's it's very simple. And our our plastic board goes right over that, like so. And then our metal retaining plate goes over that. And now all you have to do, guys, is use a pair of pliers and recrimp these tabs. Very easy. Let's recrimp these tabs. Okay. And now give it a test. Give it a test turn, make sure it's free. All right, and now this, this control is ready to go back together. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to put our, our potentiometer back in. If you remember, it goes through the back like this. And then just tighten this nut back up. What I, do, what I like to do is I like to get this finger tight and then turn it with the pliers maybe I don't know an eighth of a turn and that baby isn't going anywhere and we go to the back here we get our fire button in place get our wire in the crevice of the, the, the top of the controller housing here Slip our button back onto the micro switch and then slap our cover back on, our backing plate. Now, what I like to do when I get this thing back together is test the button, make sure the button's working nice and smooth. Just in this case, I gotta move it around a bit. Okay, button's working. And then just screw it back together. Now guys, don't don't be afraid to jump into this project because I mean paddle controllers, you know, they're not hard to come by, they're inexpensive, and let's face it, if you use this jitter and it's broken to begin with. So don't be don't be intimidated. Take the damn thing apart. Worst case scenario, you break it. And I mean that that's pretty hard to do. Okay, got our controller back together, slide this metal clip back over the half moon shaft, plastic shaft here, take our knob, slide our knob on, same way, and that's it. We have a, uh, a paddle control controller that should work fine, let's go test it out. All right, so there we have it. It's all put back together and running silky smooth. Yeah, well, you know, just because you fixed the controller doesn't mean that you play any better. So, if you're having trouble with your paddle controllers, tear into them. Get them fixed. All right, guys, talk to you next time.